Medical instrumentation, it could also have been called biomedical sensors, it could have been biomedical transducers. I'll explain what all those words mean now, but the key point here is that we are making um, devices. Right? We're making medical uh, devices that do certain things, um, such as so just this, right? So a little thermometer I use to measure my kids' temperature, right? When they say they don't feel good, right? By the end of this class, you'll know how to make these things. And that's the goal. All right, that's the goal. All right. Um, there are two general types of medical devices, as I see it. There are devices that do something to the body. And there are devices that measure something, something about the body. OK. So let's try to think. And you're going to be on one side or the other, usually, right? And so let's talk about what these kind of devices would be, right? A device that does something to the body might be. Um, what might be called a knife, right? Uh, but you might use it more if you're a surgeon. You might use scalpel, right? That's a medical device, right? That's used for something. Um, um, and right, it, it makes a cut, right? It makes a cut in the tissue, right? Um, a um, needle. That's not how, how do you spell needle. Thank you. <laughs> um, a needle is a, is a medical device, right? It's used to deliver something, right? Um, and by the way, the point of this list is not to be exhaustive, but just to give you a feel of what I mean by this side and what I mean by that side, okay? Another um, medical device might be a pump, right? Uh, let's say I need to deliver a drug and I want to deliver it in a very controlled way, right? So I would pump something in, right? But there are other medical applications where, in fact, we pump stuff out of the body, right? So we can say, you know, pump in, uh, pump out. Now, there are situations where um, there may be a part of the body that, for therapeutic reasons, needs to be destroyed, right? So people will talk about um, ablation. Spelled correctly? Let's say it's right without a T. Um, what's that? Um, so, for example, someone may have cancer, right? And the doctor may come around and they might burn it, right? And so this would be ablation using heat, right? Now, of course, they could have also maybe cut it out, right? With a knife, right? If it's a dermatologist and they see something they don't like, they don't like it. Um, so in both these, in, I would say these seem like a little bit of a category to me, right? Where you're kind of destroying stuff, right? And this seems like a bit of a category to me where you're sort of um, delivering stuff and not. Now, another example of a medical device would be a, um, a cane, a wheelchair, right? Some kind of support that someone would use. Those are medical devices. Um, um, some some type of I don't know some sort of mechanical implant. Um, artificial hip, right? Uh, something called a stent that's used to hold blood vessels open, right? And I, I see all these as sort of coming with as a bit of another category in itself, right? These are these seem like mechanical things that provide some kind of support. Right? Though obviously they, they take very different forms, right? Can you think of something that does not fall into these? Um, um, does this not fall into these categories? Yeah. Into these three. It's a genuine question, actually. Is there so, is, are my categories good? I'm sure we could think about more, right? You might, you could, I'm sure you could think about 
um, things that are used to destroy, right, or in somehow cut, things that are used uh, to deliver something in or extract something, right, and things that take the port of mechanical support. Um, oh, I can think of another one. I'm going to put it here. I want to, I want to think about a... Um, a heating blanket, right? Now, if you think about a heating blanket, right, we've all used them, right? It's like a little warm pad, right? Maybe your aunt has arthritis or something, and so she puts it on her hand, or there's some back pain, right? Um, um, uh, there are also, um, I won't write it here, there's also like uh, these massage guns, like boom, 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 right? That's it. Compression pants or something? Like sure, compression pants, compression socks. There may, there's also something you may have heard about called um, TENS. TENS devices are these little electrical stimulators you can buy in CVS. And if a part of your body hurts, you put it on it, and it kind of zaps it a little bit, and it makes it better. So in these cases, oh, the TENS, sorry. Um, so maybe the compression pants would go here. I'm not sure. It feels kind of mechanical. Maybe, um, you know, this, these really are energy based. Now, these are not strict categories per se. I'm just trying to give you a sense, right? That there's different kinds of devices and I don't know, is there anything else that wouldn't fit into one of these categories? Just kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that's interesting. Maybe mechanical, but again, these, it's a great one. Um, these are not like, these are not like the categories, right? Like God made instruments and God divided them up into four categories, right? Something like that, right? But I'm trying to give you a sense of the kind of technology we're looking at. But contact lens would be, I think, in the very, would, would, certainly, would certainly fall in the, in the mechanical arena. Absolutely. So it's a great example. Okay. So these are things that do something to the body. And I'm kind of organizing this way so that you realize that even though there's so, so many instruments out there, it seems like they kind of fall into general types of approaches, even though there are obviously many, many types. Okay. Now let's talk about measuring something, right? Would be the other side of it. So I already gave you one example, right? Here's a little device. Uh, and uh, it's on. And if I hold it, I know you can't see this, right? It's going to read... Nothing for now, right? But if it's reading a little bit low, right? But at some point, hopefully, it would pick up the temperature of my hand, right? So that would be a ther to break it up, a thermometer, right? Or a thermometer, right? This is the temperature meter. That's certainly something that we can measure. Um, there is something called a call it a glucose meter. Uh, there are some people who are, let's say, diabetic, and they need to take regular measurements of the amount of glucose in their blood. Now, we see a difference between these in that, you know, fortunately for my kids, when I do this, I don't need to prick them, right? But in this case, you actually need to extract the blood out, right? You need to prick yourself. So in this case, um, let's call it, we need to take a sample. Right, a sample has to be removed. Another example, of, and again, the, the, I'm not going to go through all of them, right? I'm just going to give you some, some, another example where you may remove a sample uh, is a COVID test. Right? There we're removing some, some, you know, I guess the medical word would be mucus, right? The non-medical word would be boogers or whatever, right? We need to remove that. Uh, there may be tests where you need to spit into something, right? Um, and so there may be tests like that. Um, and obviously, if, if, you, if you do a blood draw um, and send that to a lab, there's a lot, a lot of things that could be testing for as well. So um, these involve a sample, right? Now, in one case, you can see the sample includes an instrument that could be tested right there in the comfort of your own home. But, I mean, once it's out, theoretically, you could be sending it out to a lab as well. Right? Well, this is um, uh, right on it. Um, blood pressure. 
uh, is another one, right? That comes up a lot, right? Maybe, um, um, yes. So I'm gonna put, let's talk about ultrasound here. So with blood pressure, again, it seems to me very much like in the um, thermometer category, right? It's non-invasive, we don't need a sample. We can just put it outside, very nice, we get a measurement, right? Right, maybe your grandma needs to monitor her blood pressure, right? Now you can go to the doctor and get it done, right? Uh, but there's also devices that will do that um, at home. Now, I wanna just flag up something here though. If you've ever seen how these blood pressure systems work, there's actually a cuff that inflates, right? And inflate, and we'll learn about how it works in the class, but it inflates. Well, that kind of sounds like it's doing something to the body, right? A little bit, right? How are you getting the blood out if you're not using a needle, right? So, um, you know, there's some, now, Ultrasound is great, right? When my wife was pregnant, we we're getting these nice little ultrasounds of the baby, right? Is it a boy, is it a girl, right? Uh, perhaps you've heard of MRI or uh, CAT scans, right? X-ray scans, right? You break your bone, let's go see what's going on inside, right? We have an MRI right here on campus. So these might go in the, uh, imaging bucket, and you can probably think of other ones as well, right? So we have imaging, stuff that needs a sample, and these are sort of these um, non-invasive uh, measures. Another one is um, heart rate, right? There are devices that measure your heart rate, how many beats per minute, and there's different ways to do that. Another one is something um, that measures how much oxygen is in your blood. And we'll talk about more about what we mean about that, all right? There is a device that does both of these together, and it's called a pulse. Let me see. Pulse oximeter, pulse oximeter. All right, if you've ever been to the emergency room, right, or I, they immediately put something on you. It actually comes on your fingertip, right? And that measures both your heart rate and your um, blood oxygen. Not only will you understand the principles of this, you'll be making one in the class. So let me ask you again, is there something that you think wouldn't fall into these categories, and again, these are not categories from God, right? These are just categories that I'm thinking of right now as, we, as we're trying to make buckets. Is there something that would not fall into these buckets? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, microscope, um, they might be losing something to listen to your, um, oh, it's called stethoscope. the stethoscope as well. Um, I agree. I agree. So that would be maybe another sort of, and uh, that would be sort of maybe another bucket in, in itself. Okay. Um, so here's what we're going to do. It is ridiculous in this class to try to cover every single instrument, right? And yet, if one day you were working at, um, you know, Medtronic, right, and you're the head of the R&D division, and they say, now we're going to be incorporating this meter into it. I want you to be ready for that. And the way you will be ready for that is by understanding the principles. And it turns out that there are very few principles or rules that will allow you to explain how all of this stuff works. So even though it seems daunting, even though it seems that um, this seems like a very um, complicated instrument, perhaps, right now it's not clear to you how this works, um, it will be clear. And if later on, 10 years from now, right, you're given another device, and this is the something-something meter, and here it is, 
um, you'll be able to take a breath and say, okay, I know the principles. I know the building blocks. I can figure this out. And that's what you will leave this class with. So far, so good. And I know that seems like a tall order, but it isn't. And honestly, I mentioned, no, I teach this class the way I wish I had uh, been taught it. I wish someone had done that for me, right? Rather than being like, okay, now let's talk about ultrasound, blah, 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 all these equations. Okay, okay, fine. Now you know one thing about ultrasound, right? Rather than understanding what the overall principles are. Now, the majority of the class will be spent on this side rather than this side. Okay, and a majority of the class will be spent on these type of measurements, right? Ones that um, um, are not necessarily imaging based, right? And uh, obviously don't involve taking samples, right? Any idea why? Yeah, so that's one thing, exactly. Actually, that's the main thing. This class is lab based, it's very practical based. Uh, and these are the kind of instruments that are easiest for you to make, right? However, you will feel comfortable with all of these. Um, we will spend less time here, but I mean, come on, a knife is a knife, okay? And a pump is a pump, right? And so I feel like there's a little bit less to say here, but there is some stuff to say here, like how does TENS work? So we will touch on this, but we're gonna spend most of the course here but I feel very comfortable with that as far as explaining principles. So far, so good.